welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. That's that guy over here somewhere. I'm poking at him. We are two retired New York City police detectives with 20 plus years of law enforcement. If you like all things true crime related from the police perspective, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you will get all things Duty Ron and Ed Wallace when we go live or upload another video. Tonight, we have a very special guest, Dave Rader. The director of EquiSearch Midwest has been not kind enough to come and give us some of his time. He's a very busy man. So I want to just say thank you to Dave Rader coming on this special show. It's 14 days. In 14 short days, we will be at a year of Summer Wells being missing. Um, you know, again, Ed and I, we've been covering this case on and off uh, over the course of the, this whole past year. It's just, uh, it tugs at everybody's heartstrings. Uh, Ed, I know that you feel the same way I do. We care about our missing. We care about crime victims and, and their families. Uh, in this case, we have Dave Rader, who's going to come on and talk about some of the searching that his group did. Uh, how are you doing tonight, uh, Ed? Doing good, Ron. Doing good. You know, um, I can't believe the change in temperature from the, the last couple of days out here until today. You know, it's like a cold front is moving in, and I understand it's a... Uh, thunder and lightning out by your neck of the woods yeah it sure is 90 degrees plus yesterday a little bit of humidity uh and then today we got the now i gotta put a jacket on but no nah, not quite that dave how you doing tonight uh i know you guys have been busy thank you so much for coming in here and spending some time with us i appreciate you and twyla and the whole equisearch team it's always a pleasure always a pleasure to see you and ed and and, and to be on uh, a great program you know, Dave, before we get into it, uh, you have been um, the, the relationship that we have developed over the course of this uh, short year has been nothing, uh, nothing short of just unbelievable with the things that we were able to accomplish going out to Bakersfield, California, you guys going down to Summer Wells and everything that you've done in between, which is countless searches for uh, missing for cold cases, active cases. Cases locally, cases all over the place. Twyla's in Alabama. She's running all around. And you guys are just doing, as we say, God's work. How do you, how do you guys, how do you guys get through this, man? It's tough. I mean, you know, and thank God I've got people like Twyla and, and the rest of this, uh, the to a search family. I mean, I, this is, this is, as I've said numerous times on here, it's, this is much bigger than myself. And, and thank God that I have, uh, I have people in my corner in, in this organization's corner to to do what we do best and 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 that's to to help families bring their missing home and, and again I can't thank you enough and, and Ed for uh, for being the voice out there and, and, and keeping and keeping these families names out there um, that, that that are still missing so it's it, that's how I keep going. Yeah, you know, before we go into it, Ed, um, you know, you, 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 you know, you definitely toy around with the drones. You know all about crime scene and evidence collection. When you talk about a missing persons case like Summer Wells, we know that sometimes these missing person cases, as we've seen from in the past, they turn into uh, criminal investigations. Uh, how important is it for you know early on? for the crime scene investigators, the detectives, the TBI, FBI, Hawkins County, collecting evidence up front, uh, right up from the get-go? Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I, what I would say is that, you know, we have to investigate in the first 48 hours, just like the television show, to, to see if this if there's any nefarious activity going on here, or is this a true missing persons, or did some crime occur, Okay. And so you need to get us in there on the front end of this um, to uh, see what's going on. And again, that requires the cooperation of um, the missing person's family to allow us uh, to take a look at things uh, maybe they don't want us to look at. Uh, so we got to get in there on the ground floor uh, early on in the investigation of the missing persons to see uh, if there's anything um, a foul happening uh, associated with with the missing persons report right and we saw immediately from the get-go with candace and don here the parents of summer wells their stories didn't make sense didn't match up and um quickly 
everybody, uh, including the investigators, they didn't come out right and say it, uh, but everybody right early on from the early get go, um, that it just some of the things that she talked about just didn't match up. This live stream is not quite about um, deep diving into the investigation. It's the year in review. Uh, I brought Dave on because I want him to tell us uh, in no uncertain terms what he faced um, four days into it. After June 15th, when she was reported missing in about four days, his group packed up and head down to uh, East Tennessee to Hawkins County. Before we get into it, uh, we have Twyla Cisco here, who is the search coordinator. Uh, she um, she came in fashionably late, but because I love her so much, I'm not going to break her chops too bad. Uh, but she did come in right under the wire. We were going live, and she she snuck into the studio. Uh, Twyla, how you doing? I was busy. Really, I know. Really busy. <laughs> She's always busy, Twyla. Thank you so much. There, it was like one second. I know. So, Twyla, I want to say but thank I you. It. I want to say thank you off the bat uh, for taking out the time. I know you're a mom. You're, you know, uh, you're juggling a lot of things there. You're working, uh, flying drones. You're working on cases. So, thank you for taking out your time to talk to Crime Time with Duty Ron's family. Uh, everybody wants to hear what you have to say. And that brings me to my next point is that I want to play a piece of footage that is from the search uh, the second time around. It wasn't the four days after June 15th, but this was sometime in late July. Correct, Dave? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So this is just a small clip and it shows Twyla and her searchers on the ground, including Mr. Dave Rader. Uh, beating through the bush and uh, searching for summer wells. So we're just going to play this quick to show everybody what you guys do and how it's done. And we'll be back in a minute in 26. We start tonight with new information in the search for summer wells, a nonprofit organization that's worked on several other high profile cases. Join the search for her this weekend. Wells has been gone for more than a month. The nonprofit is called EquiSearch. They've worked with authorities to try to find missing girls, Natalie Holloway and Kaylee Anthony. The last time they were in Tennessee was to help look for Joe Clyde Daniels. The organization's Midwest division stayed in Hawkins County from yesterday until today. It says crews are using any resources necessary to find her. The director says this includes high-tech drones that can tell if the ground has been dug up and remote control sonar units that can go into water. This can help crews know what's in a pond, for example, without having to send in a diver. Volunteers say for them, it's a moral responsibility. I know if I had a child, a loved one, anybody I knew friend-wise that went missing, I wouldn't want everybody in the world out looking for them. We treat each missing person as if they are our family. Yes. Or we treat it like we take it very, very close to our hearts. Those volunteers say even though they left today, they won't give up. They say they'll keep looking until she's found. And if you have any more information about Summer Wells, call the TBI. So that TBI hotline number is linked down in the description. Um, Dave, I want to start with you. Uh, from the beginning, um, how, do, how does EquiSearch get the call out on a Summer Wells case? Just walk the audience through, and then we'll go over to Twyla, because I know she's got a lot to say about it. But just take us back to the beginning on, uh, what is it, June 19th, when you guys, uh, or you got the call before then. Just walk the audience through what EquiSearch Midwest did. So we basically got, um, we were following this case because it was in, uh, it was in Twyla's uh, home state, of course, and, and she brought me kind of up to speed on this. And then when uh, we heard that they were in need of uh, search teams to come down there, then that's when uh, we went ahead and I had Twyla actually make contact with, uh, with them down there. And then it was a fast paced from there. Uh, we got the phone call in a short time. I think I got it like on a Friday, I believe at four o'clock. And I was already on the ground and in the hotel Friday night by 11 o'clock. Um, Twyla couldn't, uh, couldn't make it uh, for that round because it was such short notice, but she was very instrumental as far as getting us and uh, getting us in and in, in, uh, in, in on the ground uh, at that time. 
And and how long did you guys stay on the first go around? Like, how many days were you there? Was it a, a, a solid weekend? Were you there for a week? I mean, I never really asked you that question. I was down there from Friday Dave to it. Dave actually got there on Saturday night. And uh, I think I got there on Tuesday. And I think, was you there a week? I was there until Wednesday. Right. So you guys yeah, did spend and quite I a bit there. So you guys did spend quite a bit of time there. And, um, you know, I, I just, you know, from watching, you know, Ed and I watched some of the early footage. And, and I think everybody here in the chat watched the early footage. It just seemed like it was um, so organized, but so massive. There was so many people there. Uh, in your estimate, what, what did you what did you what did you think? A couple hundred uh, people in and out of uh, Hawkins County. Easy. Yeah, it was absolutely. Yeah, there was. I mean, it was a mass production for sure um, within that first week. Uh, it seemed pretty much well organized. Uh, you know, they were taking us and putting us with law enforcement, GPS units. Uh, they were taking us to specific areas. And then finally, after I, I think it was that Tuesday that I finally spoke up, and and it was like you know when 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 she was already gone a week, um, we needed to expand this because I'll tell you we were just covering the same tracks over and over and over instead of expanding this, and that's what concerned me the most. And I think that that's they kind of heated our our suggestion on that Wednesday so we could actually go out and start reconning some areas that was outside of their, uh, their spectrum. Go ahead, Ed. Who was your uh, law enforcement contact uh, initially to get in there? Um, I think it was just a search coordinator, but uh, Hawkins County was the one who was over, uh, was the main law enforcement, but then they also had TBI and also the FBI. Twyla, I know you started the communication. Who were you communicating with uh, first? Um, I reached out to everybody I could think of. I reached out to the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office, the TBI, everybody. And then finally, I got a response back from the Hawkins County uh, Rescue Squad, which then uh, put me over to Coop. But there was a, uh, I don't know if it was, Coop's right hand or whatever that I was communicating with, but I did a lot of communicating with uh, Hawkins County Rescue Squad, which turned out to be a good thing because I got an email the other day and so did Dave saying that we've been added to their resource list. Oh, so that's fantastic. So if they get any more uh, missing or any type of search uh, type situations or setup, you, you're on that, you're on the call list for that. So when you guys rolled down there, um, who was who? Who did you uh, have to report to uh, to stage? So basically, we were. Uh, we had, well, we... All right, Twyla, she's going to yield to you, Dave, because you're the boss. Go ahead. All right. So um, when I first hit the ground, I, I checked in with the incident commander um, to to let them know that we were on the ground, how many individuals that we had there and. Uh, we were ready to rock and roll with whatever that they uh, that they had to uh, to put us under. So uh, it was not our search by any stretch of the imagination. We were a resource to them, and uh, so basically we were under the uh, the incident command, which was um, I, I believe it was between the Hawkins County Search and Rescue, and it was also between uh, them and the uh, uh, with Tim Coop with uh, uh, the Churchill Rescue Squad. Yeah. Uh, I remember that early on, and it looked very organized. It looked like everyone had a team, uh, and they were talking about tracking everyone's movement. I remember Ronnie Lawson came on with the TBI spokesman, um, and and he was on with her, and they were talking about how important it was for outsiders not to come in at that time, uh, not meaning you guys, but just whoever they had scheduled searching, they were tracking them by GPS or satellite or whatever they were using the program. And they didn't want residents to just come and track into areas that they were searching through. Um, so that was a, that was a big thing. And I felt that at the 
church at that location, that staging area, it looked like it was a huge, huge piece of property. So it was pretty well organized. I saw a guy on a stanchion talking to you guys, like standing up above you uh, and doing sort of like a roll call for the day. Were you assigned law enforcement for each one of your teams, Twyla? We were. Yeah. Actually, when Dave finally got us the approval to go and do the recon, we each we split up into our group. We were the only recovery team that was there. And we took our members and separated them into groups. And we had an officer with us in each group. As a matter of fact, they wasn't letting anybody on or off that road because they had law enforcement on each parts of that road and if a car was coming down they were handing her the or handing them the summer wells flyer and at some points they were actually checking those people's cars so you couldn't even get down that that road right there if you wasn't with the search team or had an officer with you wow all right so it was it was very organized and then at the end of the day i guess you know you had to just come on like come come back in and then they were probably responsible for tracking all your movements and stuff or did you guys have to hand it in individually uh, we scanned a QR code and the TBI and um, Hawkins County Sheriff's Office, as well as the uh, rescue squads, they was able to see every exactly everywhere we were at. So we used That's the QR code. And, and I'm going to tell you, there was a lot of ground that was covered, places people would never even imagine, and it was covered. Wow. So it was a, it was a total of uh, around a combination of you know uh, Saturday to you left day you said Wednesday Twyla stayed maybe a little bit later because she was you know that's that's her home state so she was able to stay a little bit longer. Um, what was the sense that you guys got at the end of this first mission? Uh, I know you left there, you know, without the prize, without finding Summer Wells. Um, what was the state, Dave, of your you know like do you have like uh, like attack meeting before and after and then at the end you grab your troops up and what, what, what was the sense of how EquiSearch Midwest felt after that first initial um, visit down into uh, Hawkins County? It, again, it was, you know, it was well organized. I can't say anything bad about that, but at the end of the day, you know, come, come Tuesday when, when we were down there and, and we had spent the whole weekend doing the same thing over and over and over, you know, uh, you know, with with our team, we're geared towards you. You cover a section, and if it's not there, then you expand that circle. And that's what we felt that we needed to do. And it started to get frustrating because we were we were going over the same exact spots. And then even when we would come back from covering a spot, they would send another team to cover what we did. Now I understand checks and balances. I, I always want I always want that because we're we're not a hundred percent. You know, and the only way that you're gonna do that is with checks and balances and I had no problem with that. But when you hear of the same area being covered, you know, after day six, you know, of, of a child in that kind of heat in that environment, um, this little girl is not outrunning hundreds of professional search teams on a mountain. Um, you know, she's in dire straits at this point in time with no food, no water. So that was the kind of frustrating thing. And, and that was the thing that I was trying to get with the, um, with, with the uh, incident commander there is to let us expand this a little bit while we still had, uh, the numbers that we could cover larger areas, but outside of what we had just covered for the past six days. Yeah. Yeah. Frustrating. Sounds frustrating. Uh, did you see any type of crime scene? Were you at the Wells property at any time in the beginning? Was there any searches or you guys were just searching the mountain or the terrain surrounding that area? We were, we were everywhere but that property. And from what I understand, they were letting no search teams up there. That was just strictly law enforcement to do their thing up there, which I understood. Right. Um, but yeah, it was. I we were never. Uh, we were in. We were around the property, but never on the property. And I know you could talk about this because you were in crime scene in the New York City Police Department. Um, law enforcement wants to keep you know ground zero where she was reported missing. Now we don't. We don't want to forget that the mother said she went into the house. She told the brothers to watch her. That she was going to go. 
She went to the mother's little trailer 20, 30 yards away or whatever. And then she came back and she was gone. So, Ed, you could talk about how and why law enforcement wouldn't want any civilians up on that property. So some people getting caught up on it, like, oh, why didn't they allow EquiSearch or anybody else to search up there? What's the reasoning maybe behind that, Ed? Well, again, you know, at this point, we don't know what, in fact, is going on. So that is the last reported known um, location for summer. So we'll control that area there and work outward from that. This think of it as the epicenter of, of this whole thing. Okay, this is where she said um, was the last person that the two boys were watching Summer um, after she had just left her grandma's and went back there. So that's we'll control that, and that's where we can get eyes on and we could see. Okay, what is, what are they telling us? And does what they're telling us match what we're seeing here? Okay, so we, we just don't want everybody to come there and trample over everything until we get eyes on and then understand uh, what's being said. You know, does that match what we're seeing here? What's the terrain like? Um, are, are there any foul play signs here? Uh, is there any blood? Is there, is, is there any signs of, um, of any crime that is occurring, you know, outside of... Um, potential drug use and, and other things that might be, uh, you know, associated with alcoholism and, and their lifestyle and so forth. You know, and, and, and evidence does come into play a little bit. You know, they want to just see if they see anything that doesn't look right or something that just doesn't match up to the initial statements, I would imagine. I, I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to do this because I want to play uh, Candace Wells, the very first interview that she gave, which was 619. I know you're shaking your head, Ed. I'm only going to play a little bit of it because I want everyone to hear the way she said she went inside, I came back out, I went in, and she was gone. So that's something that I, I know that our viewers want to see it. They want to hear it. Um, and that's one of the primary reasons why, from the beginning, any seasoned investigator would say to themselves, this just doesn't sound right. Yeah, I mean, just folks, just listen to this. Look at the body language. Look look at how she does this. And tell me if this sounds reasonable to you. I know she didn't walk away from this property by herself or off this yard by her swing. I feel in my heart that somebody has came up here and took her has lured her away from here. Me and my mother and her were planting flowers. And we went in after we got done washing our hands. And she got a piece of candy from grandma. And she wanted to go back over and see her brothers. And I said, okay. And I walked her all the way over to the porch. And I watched her walk into the kitchen where the boys were watching TV. And I told the boys, I said watch summer i'll be back and within two minutes i came back and i asked the boys where their sister was and they said she went downstairs mom to play with her toys in the playroom i said okay and i yelled downstairs for her a couple times and i didn't get no answer which was unusual because usually she always answers me and so i went down there to check and she was nowhere in sight she was just gone. I don't go on walks around here or runs because I'm scared of the bears and snakes. So, so that, that was enough for me to hear. At the, and at that point, I just said, something just doesn't smell right here. It's just, that was enough right there for me. And then it goes on for another 12 or 10 minutes. I'm not going to play all the rest of that because that's really not what this is all about. But I wanted to just give the audience an idea of why law enforcement might have initially locked down that property because remember they were getting statements from her and him that we didn't we weren't privy to we didn't hear it we didn't hear what their initial contact was with these people but if this is in controlled in a controlled environment with a reporter you can only imagine the shit that she was telling them when they first responded and what he was telling them um, so uh, can I give, can I, can I say something on this, Ron, as far as I want people to understand what she had said 
about how she walked her to the porch and things like that. Put this into perspective is that the trailer to the front porch is no more than 20 to maybe 30 feet. Wouldn't you say, Twyla? Yeah. I mean, I said yards. Absolutely. If, if that, I mean, I could throw a rock and probably hit it. That's how close. I mean, I could lay down and my body would probably stretch that far out just a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, it was very close. She literally looked over that way. So where she's sitting right now, I know you guys have been on the property since. Um, she looked over to where the front door is that leads into that house of horrors. And the kitchen is right there. And then the steps that lead down to the dungeon, I mean, playroom, uh, uh, is right there. So, you know, uh, the bottom line is, is this story stinks to high heavens. And um, whether it was rehearsed or not, it really sucks. The whole thing stinks. Um, again, I wanted to play that to give the perspective of so, for some of the folks who think, well, law enforcement was being stingy. They were they they locked down the the, the Wells compound. Uh, I call it the Wells garbage dump. Uh, the bottom line is is that the reason they locked it down is because things didn't seem right. And they didn't need to convey that to us because in a short period of time after this interview was done uh, into July and Ed, um, uh, Bill Cannon and I were arguing on air why the rest of the kids, the three boys, weren't taken away from them immediately. Uh, and as we were arguing that on the air, a day or two later, they took I, we were on with you, Bill, um, uh, Dave, me and Bill. And a day or two later, they took those boys away, and Don said it was because it wasn't safe there. Um, it damn sure wasn't safe there. Um, I want to just go over to Twyla quickly, because Twyla, I know in your initial searching, you guys came across some odd things. You came across pieces of evidence that, you know, uh, you spoke to the the Hawkins County Sheriff, and this is not anything that's a secret or anything like that. But, you know, there were some oddities that you guys came across and uh, things like that. Uh, you want to just talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you guys ran across? And I know you were chased by a bear the second time around where you saw one, and it was pretty scary. Uh, I just want the folks to know, you know, oh, what yeah. you guys came up against. I can, I can assure anybody that any part of anywhere that EquiSearch had been out there, um, she's not there. And we had came across needles and like just in open fields, needles and syringes. Um, me and another teammate was out reconning and there was definitely a bear. It, that bear came across that field and ran directly in front of us and went up this big old hill like it was flat land. Um, and, and then I've heard a lot of talk about a horse that was in the area. I can assure you that EquiSearch was there in the beginning days of that horse because we most definitely smelled it. Um, but there was a lot of different things out there. I'll tell you my opinion. When I first rolled up into that area, I was thinking, oh, my heavens, you cannot make me believe that there is a child out here because there was so much stuff. I mean, we were searching in and any kind of empty buildings that had so much junk in it. And we even searched in a, a vacant mobile home that was infested with bed bugs and you name it. I think we ran across it down in that area. It, it was not for the good. And then when I took another team out there, uh, or I took our team with another group when we conducted another search, the area that we was put in there, um, let me tell you something. At the end of the day, there were several of our searches that was that was very sick, very, very sick from the garbage that we had. To, it was just awful. Yeah. I asked Dave, too, about like ticks and fleas and um, all kinds of, you know, poison ivy and things that you guys might have been running through in there. And that was all very, very present, you know, uh, temperatures in high, what, 80s and humidity up high 90s. So there you go, Dave. It was like in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of obstacles you were up against. And again, you guys aren't getting paid. Nobody's paying you guys to do this stuff. So everyone's volunteer. Dave, no bill given to Hawkins County uh, Sheriff's Department, uh, the, um, the Churchill Rescue Squad. Did they receive a bill from EquiSearch? Absolutely not. 
No, nobody receives a bill from us. Yeah, and that's that's what makes this group amazing. And and if you guys are not supporting them, listen, I have the wristbands for Equisearch Midwest on dutyron.com. Every single dime of the money that you guys spend on paying for those wristbands, I funnel that money directly to Equisearch. Because of the generosity of all of you folks here in the chat, we were able to raise not just from the fundraiser, but all in all over the year, probably close to $25,000 for these guys. Uh, and I can't say enough good about the Crime Time with Duty Ron family. You guys are generous, great people. And Dave, Twyla, and the whole team who are probably watching either this replay or live here uh, appreciates all of the generosity that you guys have shown over the course of 2021 into 2022. So you guys are just amazing. Dave, I have an interview with you from July. This is the second go around. So I want to, I want to cue this A Houston based up. search Hold team on. is making. Hold on a second. And they misspoke. They called you a Houston based, but you are not. You are Ohio based. So let's, <laughs> let's put that on the screen. This is from the second search. You guys are up in um, up in Hawkins County the second time around. Team is making a return trip to Hawkins County to help find five-year-old Summer Wells. The research is a national nonprofit organization. 1610 members and its Midwest branch will comb through rough and remote terrain on Saturday in and around the Beach Creek community. This will be the second trip for some of them who assisted in the search shortly after Summer first disappeared on June 15th. Anything that we come across, um, my people know exactly how to, to go about clearing an area. And if anything is found, we know how to preserve evidence. We back out of the area and, um, and then we contact law enforcement, of course. If you have any credible information on where Summer Wells might be, you're asked to please call the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. There's the number. So that was a quick one. Uh, I, I played that in part because it was the second search. Um, Dave, we're into that the second time period. I just want you to just talk to the audience about how that came about. I know that it was a fr area of, fr there was a time period of frustration uh, where, you know, the people who were following this were like, how come they're not doing anything? Because after June 29th, when they gave that last press conference with the TBI, Les uh, Leslie Earhart uh, and, and Hawkins County, they just shut down. They just stopped talking. Um, so how did it come about? Did you guys call? Did Twyla call? Did they call you? Uh, let's talk about that. You know, to be honest with you, I, I, Twyla, did, did we reach, I know we reached out to them again and because we had actual, we re-looked at the Cal Topo of what was, what was or was not thoroughly looked at and searched. And I believe that we reached out to Hawkins fact, County. Go ahead, as Twyla. a matter of fact, I believe that was the time that Duty Ron was going to go out there with us. So he was in on it also. Remember, D. Ron, you made contact for us, and yeah, right, right. That was when I was talking with um, the 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 second in charge, Tony. Tony, uh, yeah, Tony, Alley, great guy. And um, then he put us on to the detective Pruitt, and then you, you know you guys took it from there. But there was a lot of conversation back and forth with them. They had said, "Well, there's no, you know, we we don't need you guys to come out there." I kind of pushed it a couple of times on my lunch break, talking with Tony. Um, back and forth, and then he finally said that, you know, you guys could come. Uh, I actually squeezed him. I said to him, can we come? We want to come. Can we? And he said, I can't stop you. You guys can come uh, as long as you don't uh, go on to anyone's private property. Remember there was that whole thing about the private property and everything? Right. I felt like um, I felt like it was because I was pushing them, they kind of said yes, come uh we can't stop you um and i remember there was an odd you had really not much communication with timmy coop during that time none at all actually you guys did your thing you handed in your reports um but just could we talk just a little bit about uh, how much ground you covered and how long you were there for that uh, second time i think we were there for three or four days um really kind of going over the mapping that's um 
we, we did a lot of recon myself and, and Toyla did a lot of, of recon work and, and she spent a lot of time on the Cal Topo maps um, with another teammate, Marcy, that um, and we found a lot of places that, that just wasn't covered uh, within that that mile, mile and a half, two mile uh, range, and we felt that it was necessary that we needed to mop that up and and, and close those those places out uh, just to make make sure. And then we expanded from from there. Yeah, and this was all during COVID. You know, there, there, it, I, I believe Twyla even got COVID uh, on that trip. If, if I'm if I'm right, she short time after that got really sick, right, Twyla? Yes, absolutely. It was horrible. It was horrible. I mean, we barely was able to find places that we could eat at, but we did have some good people in the area that um, actually was a part of trying to help us get in there too. That brought us over some food. It was just, it was just bad. But there was nothing stopping us from doing what we needed to do. We was ready to get on anybody's nerve until we was able to get our feet on the ground out there. And let me tell you, we finally made it happen and there was no time that was wasted. I think in one particular day, we actually expanded it out seven or eight miles just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Did you yeah, guys I ever think use, that's what it was. Did you guys ever search with drones while you were there and did you guys bring any dogs or were there? I know there were dogs there, but did you guys personally bring in dogs that you contracted out or, and I know drones. Yes. Right. Drones. Yes. Dogs. No okay. dogs were there when, when we arrived the first week that they had uh, a multitude of dogs um, that came that came all up. Uh, you know, on board with them, and, and and they covered a lot of grounds. It was cadaver and also tracking dogs, and then we also then brought in uh, Gene. Um, we we flew him in from from Texas um, with his his high tech drone, and uh, we had already had missions already picked out as far as on places for him to fly um, for um, with the, the camera that he has that, that actually. Um, uh, that actually could tell if a piece of ground was was disturbed, but it was just so thick in places uh, with the kudzu. Matter of fact, Twyla shared me a picture with me uh, last night of of an area that that Jean flew, and uh, when she sent this to me, I thought it was uh, there. There was no way it was the same place, and and they were they were doing some clear cutting there. So, wow. Um, the amount of kudzu, and I don't know if you, your your viewers know what kudzu is, but it it grows a foot every single day, uh, and it's just like a real thick vine. You you cannot you can't penetrate this stuff. I think we it's talked horrible. about it on a previous live it's stream, horrible. and Ed, yeah, and Ed Wallace talked uh, knew about it because he's 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 a, he knows about a lot of stuff. He and he's down in Louisiana teaching. Look, he's got the LSU hat on. Um, okay. yeah, I remember too. Hey, when Dirty Ron, it. I can tell you, I can tell you that one of those dog teams that was out there in the beginning days is most definitely a team that I know for sure works their butt off and know what they're doing. As a matter of fact, I was with, that's the canine team that I use out here in the South and was actually with one of those members from that team this past weekend when we were out conducting the search that I was on this weekend. So I know if if she was anywhere where, where them dogs was at, I, she would have been found, no doubt in my mind. And I bet a, a Dave can agree to that because that dog team is A1. I love that dog team. Absolutely, 100%. Mm -hmm. So I have so many questions. I got th three full notepads of questions. I've already gone through one of them. Um, at one point, you guys went back for the drone searching a third time, and you had the opportunity to meet with Candace and Don. Uh, do you feel comfortable enough to talk a little bit about that, uh, Dave and Twyla? Yeah. Uh, I, you, know, you know, again, uh, I'll just kind of sit at my table, and then um, Twyla has a, a much better uh, rapport with, with Candace. Right. Um, myself and Don, as, as everyone has known, is he kind of just wanted to always bash me for some reason. 
uh, and all I was trying to do was find his daughter. And uh, the last time that we were down there, he um, he came to where we were. Um, I spoke to him one on one. He apologized, and um, you know, I wasn't there for him. I wasn't there for Candace. I wasn't there for for anybody except for that little girl. And it, it was almost like lip service to me with what Don was saying. Um, you know, I appreciated it. Um, man to man, uh, you know, he, he said what he had to, and I said what I had to. Um, and, and I went about doing what, what I do best, and that's to, to try to find that little girl. So um, that was pretty much my extent of, of meeting with the family. I mean, I met with Candace and, um, you know, but, but I think that Twyla can speak a little bit, uh, a little bit more at length as far as on with, uh, with meeting with them. I want to just say one thing before Twyla talks. Uh, the, one of the primary reasons why EquiSearch would try to speak with, say, the family members of missing people is because family members can give inside information about the person that they're looking for. And it's so important, and, and Tim Miller talked about this when he was on with us, it's so important to be able to have a rapport with the reporting family because you can now in turn get inside information about the person who's gone missing. Now here we have a child, but when you're talking about teenage adults or young adults or elderly folks, they can give you some some certain information. So it's important that a group like EquiSearch gets to be friendly with the, the reporters, the people who reported the person missing, not to solve the case, but for them to get to finding the missing and bringing the missing home. Uh, exactly. And, and let me just say one thing. It's this girl that's sitting down to, that's on this screen, Twyla, I, I have never seen anybody that can sit down with a family and, and, and just, um, it's just so personable. It's, it's amazing to watch her, her work in, and, and I just let her go. You know, she knows what the hell she's doing. She, um, I, I have all the trust in the world that, you know, but again, she can, you know, there's, there's things that she can sit there and pull out of somebody because of, of the person that she is. Um, that's that I can't, or, or, or some, sometimes people don't want to talk to law enforcement and, and they want to sit there and, and talk to somebody other than, than a batch. Right. Um, and, and Twyla takes that on, and, and and I have to say she's she's damn good at what she does. Amen to that. I've heard her speak many a times. Twyla, what was your take on the Wells? You guys sat down. Uh, as a matter of fact, you guys sat and broke bread with them. Uh, that's, a, for me, a little bit out of my comfort zone. I know I would probably do it to be polite, but I wouldn't. Uh, that would be a hard uh, pill for me to swallow, to sit down and, and break bread with them at the table. You want to talk a little bit about that? I I, I know Ed feels the same way uh, that I do. Uh, I, I would have a hard time not questioning them about uh, their daughter, like on a police level. So it's best that I wasn't there. <laughs> Twyla? Right. Well, in, in the beginning, I was, I was like, I had this mindset of, you know, I was angry because I was like, I have an eight-year-old little girl that's on a level of, summer's age and i was mad at, i was so mad because i was like how do you how can you let something like that get out of your sight but deep down in my heart my heart would not let me not communicate with these people and i didn't sit down with them and try to ask questions because that's not my job my job is to in any case that we get is to make contact with the family and let them tell me their story. And I never once dug for information, period. And there was multiple times, multiple times, even after we left that area, you know, Candace has called me and I can't, I can't put my personal opinion out there of the situation. But one thing I can say is in my heart, I know that they are human beings. And at the end of the day, they are her parents. I'm not going to go in and question them. 
I'm going to stand right here and, and, and be the friend that they need at that very moment to, to talk to, you know what I mean? And I don't know how that happens with me. I don't put nothing in my head of, let me go in here and see what they say. I mean, for Christ's sakes, they went to dinner with us and I literally sat at a, at a booth, a small booth with Don and Candace and one other lady. And I just, I, I, I don't know. It just comes natural. And in my heart, I couldn't, I would never want to treat somebody bad regardless of the circumstances. And I knew if I treated them bad, it was going to, it was going to eat me to my core. Cause I'm not that type of person. I can't, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Now it, it don't run when it comes to me though. Um, we, at that point in the beginning, there was no probable cause to get a warrant uh, to do searches there. So we're, you're, I would have to rely on their goodwill to give me consent to do what I needed to do to get onto their property and search the cabins and search the trailer and search the basement and the property itself. So, uh, you know, I, at that point in time, you know, I would have um, say, look here, I'm here to help you find your missing child. I need and I need your consent and I need you to put it in writing so that we make this all legal and allow me to do my job the best that I can do. Right. Uh, abs absent that, uh, I'm not going to be able. Exactly. Yes. That's exactly what I said to him, Ed, exactly what mm -hmm. you're saying. He, he's, he's a smart guy because I went up there to meet her before our team even got in town. And I said, I'm not here to play detective. I'm not here to investigate. I'm not here to do nothing. I said, to be honest with you, I'm not here for you or your husband or anybody else that's at this house right now. I'm here for that little girl. I said, and that that's our goal. And I will tell you this, while we were standing there, they gave us full permission to do whatever we wanted to do on that property. And I didn't have any, any problems, but it was like, what's, people get off of that property and out of the area that's when the the craziness starts but I, dead on what ed said that's exactly what i did i want to just say this this was in july that they were that they went out and had uh, dinner with them uh the wells gave law enforcement permission the day they reported and the days to follow full permission to search their property the tbi i have the um I have the TBI's uh, website, and I can just go over it quickly with you guys. But I don't. I'm not going to, you know, put it up on the screen and read it. But they gave them multiple search permissions to. Uh, they gave them permission multiple times to search their home, the crawl space, the sheds, everything on it, every piece of it, up, down, over, and under. Drone searches, aerial searches. They had aviation from adjoining counties uh, assisting them in night searches for, I think, 14 days straight. So uh, I did a lot of looking at over the course of this year, but also tonight before we went live, I did a lot of research on what the TBI and the FBI and local uh, and the state did on this case. And they searched a lot, a lot. Uh, but when the cover... Uh, when all of the foliage came off the trees, as we know, the end of November, they were back out there again. And everybody was in a, everybody went wild. Like, ooh, why are they going back there? Well, they had a clearer view of the the seal, you know, the floor of where they want to search, the, the, the property, all surrounding that property. And Twyla, you did get to look at some images of um, some of the stuff that Chris did and Jean did. With the foliage off, how much better of a view do you do you have? And and Ed, you know about this too. I mean, is it night and day, Ed? Yeah. Well, when the canopy drops, okay. Um, so now you have a better view. But what, what the canopy drops, those leaves they go down onto the ground. So now the ground is covered. Right. Okay. So you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Or, you know. Um, so you know, you you. you it gives you a better vantage point. Um, and if you're using LIDAR and, you, and you're mapping and so forth, uh, you can find anomalies uh, in the topography. And then, you know, you might want to highlight those areas for uh, additional ground uh, searches um, to, to send your troops into there and take a look. Uh, but like I said, um, the uh, boots on the ground is, is, <laughs> High tech is great. You got all the good toys, the so forth. But 
Um, the bottom line, high tech could find something, but it's the boots on the ground that's going to confirm what's going on there. In your opinion, Ed, what's it going to take to recover some of wells? Somebody confessing to this or um, somebody coming forward that knows something? Well, we don't know definitively uh, if she's not alive. We, we, we don't know. She still could be alive. Um, uh, somebody, somebody, listen, they, the, the truth is out there, you know, and I don't want to sound so cliche-ish, but it's out there. Somebody knows and, and they're not talking. Okay. Um, and eventually we'll get, we'll get the truth. We'll find out what, what, what happened here. Was she abducted? Uh, was she removed? Was she the victim uh, of a, of wildlife? Uh, was she the victim of crime within the family? And now this is all uh, uh, covering up what, what occurred. Uh, eventually the truth is going to come out. It always does. Maybe not in, in the time frame that we would like it to come out, but eventually it'll get out and, and we'll know the truth. Yeah. Amen to that. Trevor Lee sends in a super chat. And, and those of you who are sending in questions, uh, there'll be a 15 minute period of question and answer. It's coming up soon. So hang on to the end. Trevor Lee sends in the $5 super chat. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for all you do for Summer Wells. Dave, Twyla, Ron, and Ed are the reason she'll get her justice. So much love for this panel. God bless. Trevor is the young gentleman uh, who started the, um, the the reward fund for, he? well, he didn't start it. He donated $2,000 of his own money to the reward fund for Summer Wells. And I, I can't say enough good about this kid. I've had him on with us so many times. Dave, Twyla, Ed, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. University gonna, student. Yeah. University of, I have it written down here. I think East Tennessee, East mm -hmm. Tennessee U. Uh, so kudos to you. I sent you the link, Trevor, if you want to come up, you're welcome to come up. I just want to do one thing here. I promised that I wasn't going to do this, but here I am doing it. Um, these are some of the questions on the TBI newsroom. Um, and I just want to go over these quickly. They have updates, but there's some questions. It says, when was summer last seen? And we know the mother reports last seeing her on the afternoon of June 15th at their home on the 100 block of Ben Hill Road. Have you searched the home and property around the residence, including the basement and they, uh, around the residence and their property? Yes, more than once. This is the TBI, including the basement, crawl space, all vehicles, outbuildings, barrels, and all other items located on the property. Additionally, canine teams specializing in a variety of search methods have also been utilized. Uh, have you searched phones and computers belonging to the Wells family? Yes. Working along with the Hawkins County Sheriff, the FBI, numerous subpoenas and search warrants have been attained, result, resulting in any available digital evidence being collected, searched, and documented. This includes social media accounts. That's huge. Um, have you searched the flower bed? That was a big concern. These are just answering some of the questions. There was not a flower bed. Summer's mother and grandmother stated that they were planting flowers with them shortly after uh, she was lost. As you saw in that picture and the video that one was taken by another uh, YouTube person, it was no flower bed. It was a tire that was filled up with dirt uh, upside down, and they were planting in, a, in a, like a tire kind of setup. Have you searched the waterways in the area? Yes, dive teams were brought in to search bodies of water in the area. Have you conducted aerial searches? Yes, numerous searches from the air have been completed, especially during the first few weeks of summer uh, after summer went missing. Additionally, drones were used uh, to map the area and to pinpoint bodies of water as well as any other points of interest. So I, I implore you guys to go to the tbinewsroom.com. I will link that down below in the description. You can go and look at everything that was done there. Dave, um, I hate to put you on the spot, but do you think summer will be found eventually, Dave? I'm with that. As far as, you know, there's, again, it goes back to my same, my same thing that I said 360, you know, days ago. It's, there's, there's three people that, two, you know, that was in 
in possession of her, watching over her, that knows what the hell happened, and, and possibly the third. I, you know, um, you have to stem from that. They were they were there. They're they're their guardian. That's that's their you know her guardian. Um, something had to have that they know happened to this little girl because, like I said, <clears throat> getting off of that property. Um, it, it's tough. I, I mean, it's very tough and, and not to be around um, and, and found uh, that that same night or within 24 hours. Um, you know, my question is, is did she even make it home? Right. That's been my biggest thing is, did she really make it home? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Will she be found only if, if somebody uh, comes forward? That's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough question to ask, and, and I, I had to ask it of you. Um, another thing, too, that I personally am, am, am curious about, has Hawkins County or any of the uh, folks down in that area tried to reach out to you guys to ask you to come back? And if they do, will you come back? Twilight? Bueller? Um, um, we, get, we get tips. uh through our website and also and any i'm gonna tell anybody here too that's not comfortable some people just doesn't uh, feel comfortable reaching out to law enforcement but i'm in contact with uh somebody that's with law enforcement that's very you know that's on her case and i feel like when the time comes we will be requested and and we will stop what we're doing to go out there to assist with anything we possibly can to try to um uh clear more ground for her because it's some bad that's some rough rough stuff out there but i feel in my heart that when the investigators and stuff needs us there's no doubt in my mind that they'll reach out to us they got our number another thing too thank you for that twyla another thing too that a lot of people get stuck on is like how do how, do EquiSearch, how does EquiSearch get involved in searching for, say, missing people? I mean, I know you guys get hundreds, thousands, maybe, you know, I don't know the exact numbers of what you guys get as inquiries. I know that I get a lot of inquiries for you guys. Um, how does that go? It, do we, can you explain that, Dave, how it goes for, for the folks who are watching? Well, I mean, as far as there's, there's a lot of times that family members will, will actually reach out to us. Um, and, and, and then they have to fill, fill out the missing person report. And, and then at that point in time, law enforcement would reach out to us. Um, there's a lot of times where law enforcement actually has mine and Twyla's number to contact, contact us directly. So that when that phone call comes, we can, we can immediately start on, on the process and, 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 and we, we don't have to wait for the missing person report. So. Um, if somebody's loved one is missing, they just kind of have to go to the um, uh, the website and fill out a missing person report. And at that point in time, we have to be um, we have to be brought in by law enforcement. There is no there is no ifs ands or buts about that. We always go and work hand in hand with law enforcement. Right, right. So that's 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 the that's the pecking order. It, it goes straight. Law enforcement has to give the kind of kind of the blessing, so to speak, uh, for searching. It's not say the family's approval. Uh, you need to have law enforcement give you the blessing to go in there. No, yeah. law, law enforcement. Stacey, is, thank is, you for becoming a channel. Yeah, Stacy, thank you for becoming a channel member. And Tony D sends in a super chat, twenty bucks, and says, "With Twyla and Dave's approval, I will be adding an asset to Midwest." team's arsenal very soon can't wait tony d send an email to uh dave raider uh i'll go over to the facebook site you guys know how to get a hold of them uh of dave if you can't get a hold of him and you can't figure it out tony just send me an email on dutyround.com and i'll forward it over to dave um that's exciting thank you thank you i know dave you guys are always willing to accept and here's the message uh, from Tony D. It looks like he's got your, um, he, he screen grabbed the the, the, uh, the badge there from Midwest. And he says, with Twyla and Dave's approval, I'll be adding an asset 
to the Midwest teams, Arsenal, very soon. Can't wait. Thank you, Charlie. Exciting. I wonder if that's a new member, Tony, that we have. We have a new member that recently joined, and his name is Tony. And with him having that logo up there, I'm wondering if that's him. I'm not yeah. sure. I'd have to go back and look at his name. If he if he joined, then he would probably just communicate that with you guys the one on one. Um, I had, I had another. Either way, uh, we appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Canadian Cookie, thank you for becoming a channel member. What a cute uh, screen name, Canadian Cookie. I was going to play Leslie Earhart's uh, press conference from June twenty fourth, but I'm not going to play it. I want to go straight to the questions. Ed, do you have anything else for these guys before we wrap? No, they do great work. They, they, you know, again, they're all volunteer folks. And, yeah, we gave a fundraiser for them um, back a while ago, and we raised a lot of great money, and I thank you all for that. But continuous support is always needed for their operations. You know, uh, we're, we're, yeah, everybody's hurting these days because of inflation, and we're probably going to go into a recession soon. So every little bit helps. Uh, if you can spare some, please give some to the cause here for them. You know, they, their gas, their vehicles, hotels, travel, uh, food, and so forth. It's like I said, an all volunteer organization. And um, they're going all over the country doing God's work. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that, Ed. I can't say enough good about EquiSearch. And, and to those of you who have given super chats, uh, donations straight through PayPal, uh, I've linked all of EquiSearch's uh, information in the description here. And, and, and there's a clear and, and concise way to donate directly to them. But for those of you who send super chats here, everything that comes in on any of the live streams that we do with them, I forward it minus the 30% from YouTube straight to Dave. Uh, and EquiSearch Midwest. So all of those fundage, uh, Lady May, thank you. She sends in a super chat with a question. In Dave's opinion, in Dave's opinion, does he think Summer is on that mountain? Question mark. And did JSB interfere with her dogs? I don't know who JSB is. I don't know if you know what that is. Dave, if you don't, just ignore it. Um, we don't really get involved in any type of drama or any kind of infighting and stuff like that. I don't know who, what a JSB interfere in, is, but Dave, if you can answer maybe the first part of that question, that would be great. Um, the question was, is do I think that she's on that mountain? Um, I, I don't, I, I can't see how the hell she could be with the amount of people that were on that mountain um, almost instantaneously and over the few days that, you know, you know the week, um, the two weeks that, that, that was, that was just scoured over and over and over I, it, by multitude of different, uh, search teams and tactics. I, I would be shocked if she was found on that mountain. Now, the only, the only thing that I can say to that is, is that, um, was she moved? Now that's a possibility that we, again, we, we don't know. So just knowing what I know and how that, how that ground was covered, not only by us, but uh, law enforcement and other search teams. No. Right. Could she have been moved back there afterwards after everybody sat there and went home? 100%. It's been done. Yeah. Yeah. I want to show quickly um, EquiSearch, the homepage, EquiSearch Midwest. The This is their website. So this is their landing page on their website. And, and right here up at the top, there's a, a, a three, three, um, three lines in. There's home, about, cases, and then the fourth uh, is a donate. Uh, you click on that donate, and then it gives you a way to, to donate, which is right here. Boom. And, and you could just go and donate directly right at that location. So I'll link that down below. And here is their Facebook page. Just want to show this quickly, Dave, because I think this is important. Everyone, if you're on Facebook, uh, I mean Facebook, go on over to EquiSearch Midwest. Uh, I have that linked in the description here. And they, they have all their cases and, and things of that nature that they covered. There's tons of missing persons, flyers, on their Facebook page. So I encourage you to go on over there and check it out, engage, interact, talk with them, 
uh, donate. There's the letter of recommendation, I believe, from the Jackson Police Department. Um, and, and and at the end of their, their um, uh, uh, look at that, lost is not alone right there. Awesome. So that's good stuff. Um, you guys are doing God's work, and I am here every day and every day and any day to support you guys. Uh, I, I thank you for taking out the opportunity and the time to come in here and talk about Summer Wells. I know that you guys have so many active cases that you're working. Uh, and when I asked you to do it, you were just like, just name the time and the day and we'll be there. So um, can I say one more thing before we wrap it up? Yeah, sure. As far as the donations, um, again, it, it is phenomenal of what your listeners um, and, and followers do for us. And in return, I want you to know that $4,000 of the money that was donated to us bought us two high-tech drones. Um, one is coming into my hands. One is going into Gene's hands down there to further his research. So that's what your donated dollars do. And, and Twyla just spent three days down in in, in Alabama at, at four 75 uh, a gallon of gas in hotels uh, that helped her get get to where she needed to help out in, in another case. Um, we sent down our other drone to to Twyla. So that's um, so again, we're we're trying to sit there and, and and just cover every every base that we possibly can. So I just wanted to let you guys know that through your hard uh, hard working and, and and your generosity of donating is, is that this is the kind of things that, that, that keep us going and, and keep one step ahead of where we need to be, to be the best that's out there. That's phenomenal, Dave. And thank you for sharing that because, you know, a lot of these folks, you know, they don't know what the hard earned money that they sent in, where it goes and they know it goes to you guys, but well, to hear that two high tech drones were purchased with that money from the fundraiser that we we spent four hours uh, talking to everybody and anybody. I think that was time well spent, and um, look, it makes it makes me feel so great to know that you guys have gotten some great equipment, and that equipment is going to go to helping find uh, and and bring the missing home. So, ah. yep. one hundred percent. Thank you. Thank awesome. you for letting me say that. Awesome. So. Awesome. Twyla, you got any final words? You're starting to get dark there, and you might have to light a candle so we could see you. <laughs> My my daughter came out here. I want to show you because she's always, always asking me, Mama, when are you going back for summer? When are you going back for summer? And every time I went, she's always wanted to go. As a matter of fact, my son, Jaden, that just turned 18, Dave got the drone in my hands and he's like, Mama, I'm doing this. You need to go ahead and put me on the team. He wanted to go with me this past weekend, but I couldn't let him. But I just want to stick with what I always say. Treat people the way you want to be treated because there's so much bad that's going on in the world. And and just smile at people because you never know what somebody else is going through. And that that smile can can make somebody's whole whole freaking day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just treat people the way you want to be treated. And I think this world would be a better place. And we still won't give up on summer or any any missing person that, that comes across our path. <laughs> yeah, and Twyla, somebody sent in a super chat, the uh, fuzzy doxy, and she says, Twyla. Twyla can stay with me if she's in Birmingham in the area. So you got a you got a place to stay with Fuzzy Dog. You just got to feed the dog. I'm, the I'm coming, Fuzzy Dog. I want to just yeah. say this, to you, guys and girls. Um, so about the neighbor and that JSB or whatever that the, the the initials were, it just goes to show you how much I don't pay attention to the white noise. Uh, Ed and I and Dave and Twyla, we do not get involved in any of this infighting and nonsense that goes on. We pay attention to the facts of what's being reported by law enforcement with the FBI and the TBI, and they're not putting anything out. So if there's nothing to put out, we're not going to start talking about stuff. So infighting between neighbors and people that are overzealous and that want to go out and start trespassing and kicking uh, the can, so to speak, on people's property. We we definitely don't. I won't even know anything about it because I feel that watching stuff like that is time wasted. You can never get those moments back. It's just a waste of time. And the main thing is that it doesn't get us any closer 
to finding summer wells. It just adds to the BS and nonsense that's out there. Don't become the BS and nonsense. Uh, no Jagaloon says Tony D. <laughs> Absolutely. I have the sign right here. Uh, don't make me pull it out. All right. In addition to proper tactics saves lives, I have my Jagaloon sign. Uh, no Jagaloon zone here. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Ed, you got any final words for the folks? I know you, you, you this is, listen, we, we wanted to do this because it was important. It's coming up 14 days will be two years for Summer Wells. Uh, anybody, uh, any, in, any inspiration for anybody who's following this and other cases, things to do, things not to do, anything like that, Ed? Well, again, uh, don't don't be uh, one of those YouTubers uh, that show up uh, at uh, these locations and and stir up problems. Um, you know, law enforcement is spread thin these days, and uh, you know we need help, but we don't need trouble. Um, so, if you're not going to contribute to the cause, then there's no reason for you to to be there. Um, you know, so just say prayers that, uh, we come to some sexual successful, um, conclusion with this case and understand that, you know, those prayers are needed and they're heard. Yeah. Amen to that brother. And you know what? I'm going to answer this cause Lexi, uh, Luther has been in the chat so long, but she must've not heard us a few minutes ago talking about this, but yes, we, we can't. EquiSearch cannot insert themselves into law enforcement or into their cases. They have to be contacted and they have to have uh, approval to come in. If they don't get approval, they don't just show up. It's not like a reality TV show where Twyla and her whole crew shows up and says, oh, we're here. We're going to start searching. It all has to be on the up and up. So thank you, Lexi, for that question. And thank you to everybody who has been here. If you're not yet subscribed or given the thumbs up, I encourage you, I'm asking you to please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all one word, Duty Ron. And we're also on TikTok, Duty Ron. Ed hates it, but we're on there. He has no choice. Um, Dave Twyla, on behalf of Crime Time with Duty Ron, I want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you for all the work that you guys do for all of the missing uh, and their their loved ones and their families. You guys are awesome. I, I, I have nothing, I can't just, I could sit here all night and say this stuff, but I can't overemphasize how how much respect I have for both of you guys. And, and I thank you tremendously from the bottom of my heart for everything that you do. And the feeling is is uh, is mutual with you and Ed and uh, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Very much. Yeah. 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 Right. Guys, love you guys. Love you guys. We're gonna end it as I like to end all of these. God bless the world. God bless the United States of America, and God bless each and every one of us here in the chat. But especially all victims of crime and their families and our lost loved ones that are out there. But send prayers, strength, and positive vibes and support them positively, not negatively. See you guys soon. I'll talk to you. Stay safe. Stay prepared. Watch your six.